Alright, it's late, but I'm going to get the ball rolling on this. Uh, today's video, I'm going to be going over several different little things. Uh, starting with VAR. Edit this out. Starting with... Starting with patching holes in canvases, finished and unfinished. I have examples of both an unfinished canvas that I haven't started that has a little hole in it. I also recommend don't draw with graphite. Recently I got charcoals. I would recommend using like white charcoal or just a charcoal because it will disappear better and also be way more clean than pencil. This is what pencil looks like. It's it's really bad. I'm probably going to cover up over this. But we got a hole here, and then over here we have a finished painting, and it also has a hole up here. The second thing on the agenda to do is varnishing paintings. Recently I did an art show, and I sold my first painting ever, and you might remember it. It's the frogs. I didn't have a signature on it when I sold it, and I didn't think I'd see this back here, but I already put the signature on the off camera, but... I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. When I come back, we're going to varnish this. I got another painting over here that I'm worried is going to fade really badly. I was going to varnish this sooner, but I think it's going to fade. Uh, this is a painting I did a long time ago. Yeah, it looks like it's fading. So we're going to varnish that as well. The third part is going to be painting on a budget and creating small projects. And here I got a collection of little small projects that I've done on pieces of poster board. That's the budget part. These are uh, actually really cheap. For like two pieces of poster board, it was like two dollars. I cut them to size, little postcard sizes, and you can make a whole lot, and you don't have to commit to the painting. You don't have to make it look perfect. You can just bang these out really quickly. It's affordable. You could use acrylics or oil. Right here we got an oil paint. This is on, I think, 5x7. I don't know which way I'm supposed to hold this up. Okay, I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention that I also have cut pieces of canvas. I got these from a old laundry bag that's made out of canvas, and I just cut it up and I have little patches. Speaking of that art show, I got my sign here. I said I was going to explain it. This is the uh, sign I made for the art show. I had this hanging off from the end of my trunk. I had my uh, car's trunk open. I was just showing my paintings inside my car like a gallery. First start by using your ruler. Have an idea in your head of what size you're going to be using, whether the paintings are gonna be large or a bunch of little small ones. All right, before I uh, do the next step, I just wanted to tell you, uh, warning, Knives, be careful. Use safety, keep your hands away from the blade. Be careful. All right, just run your knife over the same area. When you use the knife, you don't want to go all the way down really fast. You kind of want to go over, return over the same spots to make sure that your board lifts out effortlessly. turn back to where you just went over so you're sure that you're going all the way through and you don't want to go fast take your time don't just run through it and keep these fingers over here on this side keep use the ruler as the guide keep your fingers back and away from the blade this is how you cut this poster board all right patching an incomplete or blank canvas we're just going to put the patch in and we're going to use the gesso as the glue and spread it out nice and thin. First on the patch, then on the canvas, and then sealing it together by painting the edges. Now we are painting the crack and we're just going to fill it with gesso until it's gone. And while you're at this, you might as well paint over... Uh, the whole entire thing and you're just gonna keep filling that crack it might take a couple times it took like seven or eight times to do 
Now I'm patching the finished one and it's just the same process again. You might have to go in and like try to uh, wash the other side of the painting because there might be some gesso that gets through and spreads all over the place. Okay, now we're going to varnish. I have right here cloth, gamvar, brush, a mop brush here. Make sure your brush doesn't have any dirt or hairs or dust in it. I got a little bit of warm water that I warmed in the microwave. Now, I didn't do this with the other times I varnished, but I've seen some other artists on YouTube that have done this specifically for the satin varnish. Pour it out, dip her brush in, and spread it out. Use the light to check where the glare is. Wherever the glare is is where varnish has been laid down. If it's not glaring, it's dried. Now we're going to run into some mishap here. Remember to close your bottle of varnish. Don't just leave it out. I wanted to see how it would do because I have been using Liquitex varnish and I hate it. Ah! No! No! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Right now, because of the that spill that happened right behind here, I had a bunch of paintings behind there. They uh, got splashed on. I lost more than half of this bottle. This bottle looks gross now, unfortunately. I don't know if it's if you can see it on the camera, but there's splotches and blobs. I worked on another painting that had the same problem. It seemed like just adding another layer of varnish. Well, that one was unvarnished, but. Putting varnish on top of it seemed to fix it, so I think it reactivates. This has already been varnished, so it's getting another layer. Now for the future, I'm going to recommend doing this for safety precautions. After brush dipping, just put your brush down on the painting. That's where the varnish is going to go anyway. But always make sure to close your bottles. Use this video as my precautionary tale. If it happened to me, it can happen to anybody. We're just going to spread out the glaze over this splashed on painting and just work out the splatters. Take a look under the light. It will reactivate and did. And you will see the splatters disappear. This was already varnished on, but there was other ones that were unvarnished that got splatted. As you can see, this one also as well got splashed on. And again, just repeat the same process. Now, before I start, we close our caps. Secure. I'm going to make sure to do that from now on. Anytime I close a bottle, I'm going to go secure. Here I have this old painting that I need to clean and hasn't been varnished. It's been sitting in my kitchen above the stove and it's been collecting grease all over it. So today we're going to clean it. I got two-stage system. I got soap, hot soapy water. Now I diluted it down so it wouldn't uh, break up the paint because when you clean brushes I use a lot of soap and it breaks through a lot of the paint pretty well and I don't want to do that. I just want to cut through the grease so I got warm water cut through that grease and the soap has been diluted down a lot. And then here I got some cold clean water to follow that up. I got two cloths, one going to be the one that I apply uh, soap to and the other that I'm going to apply a clean cloth to. Now, let's take our cloths and we're going to fold them. I guess kind of like this, maybe, maybe more like this. I don't want to like soak the whole entire thing. 
I just want to get a little bit dabbed on to a cloth. And then I'm going to very, very lightly, because I don't want to take the paint off, I'm going to very lightly clean this painting. It's got hair, it's got grease. Also, how I made this painting, I took copy paper and I paper mache it on with a mixture of flour and water. Now, some of this is probably flour that is aged onto this gesso here. I was thinking of covering it, it with white gesso, but it's actually quite dirty. Like, look at that, that's filthy. I knew it was filthy because up here, you just rub your finger across it and it's like this nasty, greasy substance. Don't want to disturb the painting that's already here. Now you're just going to rub your cloth lightly on the canvas. Right, we're going to go slowly. I'm going to rub in circles. I'm going to work slowly. It doesn't look like I'm getting any pigment off, so that's a good sign that we're not disturbing the paint underneath. The paint might get disturbed slightly, but as long as you dilute your solution, it will be very minimal. Some of this looks like old flour, like it's it's yellowed with time. And that's because it's been hanging above my stove in the kitchen, collecting grease and dust and all sorts of nastiness. And this is an unvarnished painting that I just kind of just hung up and forgot about. For the next part of my video, I'm here in the bathroom. Most of my brushes, because they keep them in good shape, they're... They look mostly good. I mean, I really should ruin them on purpose to show this method. Brushes have been used for a long time and have buildup in it. So there's a couple ways we can clean our brushes. One thing we can do is just use regular old soap. After you've completed a painting, soon after, the best thing you could use is regular bar soap. You don't really need anything extra, but if you let it sit and wait too long, there's a couple other options. Well, the first, you'd still want to clean with this bar, but you're not going to get the stuff stuck out of the ferrule. Now, you should probably do this method also, even if you do keep your brushes clean, because it does build up in the ferrule. Even if you keep your brushes immaculate, you'll still have a little bit that just gets backed up. It loves to stay back up in here where the uh, glue holds the bristles. It makes your brush misshapen. This brush is misshapen. It's been abused. It is clean, technically. The other thing you can use, special artist brush soap. First, we're just gonna use regular old soap. Now, if it's really stuck in the ferrule and you haven't cleaned it in a while, or you have cleaned it, but it's just a buildup that's been building up. Because even if you do take care of your brush, it just still builds up. The best option you can go for is isopropyl alcohol. 70% is fine, but you can use a 99 would be even better. Alcohol will break up acrylic, especially acrylic paint. It will break up uh, acrylic paint, like if you have it stuck on palette knives. If you're a messy painter like me and get it on the brush, you can see this brush has paint on it. Start with the alcohol and you're going to want to just kind of run it through the alcohol. After a while, little particles of paint falling out of the ferrule. Most of it will still stay in your ferrule. Sometimes there's not much you can do but buy a new one. This will get you to a couple paintings in the future. Once you do that for a while, then what you do is just run it under water. Now, if you've tried all those routes, the next best thing you could try, Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. I don't notice much of a difference between it and the regular bar soap for everyday cleaning. I'd say for everyday cleaning, just use this. If you have uh, paint that's, like if you have a brush that's completely dead, you've filled it up with paint, and you've left it aside and you haven't cleaned it for a year, six months, I don't know, two weeks, it doesn't matter, even a day. When you leave paint in your brush, it's going to destroy it. It's not going to be flexible like this. I have no good brushes to show for example of like what happens if you don't. You have your brush just loaded with dried out paint and it's just, it won't budge. It just stays in one place. The best thing you can use is the master's brush cleaner. Use it to save brushes rather than 
everyday use. Used it for everyday use, but I've started to notice there's really no difference between using this and this. The only difference is, is this conditions your brush better. It holds its shape better. First, wash it out. Run it on the soap. Run it through your hands. You do this for as long or as short as you need to. It depends how dirty your brush is. Like I said, this brush is clean. The next thing you can do is put in a little bit of water, go through the master's brush soap, and then don't rinse it out. Don't rinse it out, just run your fingers through it and try to reshape the brush the best you can. And the more times you do this, I could probably repair this just by repeating these steps over and over again to sh reshape the brush. And as you can see, it's like kind of getting better. Even if you have a messed up brush, you can use a messed up brush for things like blending and other techniques. You don't need your brush to be perfect. Leave it up to your discretion. You know, when you have a, a dogged brush that has its purpose, all things have its place. And if it has a purpose, use it that way.